Welcome back to another episode from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Dom. And today we're going to talk about what exercises really help to improve posture. And it might not be what you think, so stay tuned. Before we dive in, I just want to remind you to hit subscribe because Dom and I have so many more topics that we go over on questions that you ask, specific pains or diagnoses, and every week I come out with specific exercises you could do for a pain point, a diagnosis, whatever it may be, and we know what content to create based on the questions you ask, so don't forget to comment below as well. The most taboo topics, most talked about topics, which is posture and mm -hmm. what exercises should I specifically do to improve my posture? We'll give examples of things, but we're not going to necessarily say, here are the five exercises you need to do to improve posture. And I know there's a lot of things out there like that, but we're going to kind of talk through why that doesn't really make sense and what you yeah. can do instead and what you should focus on. And I think first defining what posture is will help kind of frame our conversation because everyone thinks of posture as one static snapshot. Like, how do I look in this one photo? And while that, yes, that's a component of posture, I like to view posture as how I dynamically feel and move in yeah. my body throughout the entire day and how I find ease and freeness in my body yeah. throughout the entire day. It really shouldn't be seen as a single snapshot. This is my posture. Right. Because throughout a day, we should assume hundreds of postures <laughs> yeah. and different ways of holding ourselves and moving. And so I want to move the consensus away from or this paradigm away from a single posture snapshot to viewing posture as how we are holding ourselves dynamically throughout the whole day. Well, and what's really important about that too is a lot of people when you've been told pull your shoulders down and back and open up your chest it actually creates an inefficient pressure system within your body because now i'm thrusting my rib cage out i'm putting tension into my back and so when i breathe i'm going to probably put more tension into my chest rather than my lower rib cage and belly area that helps to disperse the pressure from my pelvic floor and back. That's just, again, that's just one cue and one body area, pull the shoulders down and back. And then some people will say, okay, and keep the rib cage down and make sure your pelvis yeah. is engaged and <laughs> make sure. A lot. But again, a lot of these cues that people try to give are static. Right. It's something that you're doing just in, at one point in time, but how do we get some of that support? Essentially what we're trying to do is find support and yes. find good balance in the body. Yeah. How do we get that support and balance to feel like it's lasting, to feel like we don't always need to be thinking about it that's the key holding ourselves like a tin soldier yeah like it, it shouldn't need to be such a conscious thing that we're always right. voluntarily holding ourselves in this really stiff rigid position it should be something that we work on yeah. and develop over time that becomes automatic and it might look a little different for every person and so in general the exercise is best to improve posture is exercise yeah is moving more <laughs> yeah and within that movement knowing where you have restrictions knowing what you don't do a lot knowing yeah. the positions you're sitting in for the majority of the day whether it's at work whether you stand and more actively and you know that oh i'm always kind of overextending through my back and, and then knowing when i have a break i need to get some forward movements same so with doing sitting the opposite <laughs> yeah. of what you do doing more the th opposite the day. yeah of what you tend to do what your tendencies are so that you're working on your restrictions. And this doesn't necessarily have to be like an exercise program that you're doing on a, an everyday basis. Like what Dom is pointing out is that you're you're starting to put yourself in different positions in different postures throughout the day based on what you're already doing. So if I'm sitting at my desk grounded, how often am I taking breaks to reverse that posture? How often am I taking breaks to open up my chest and do a simple mobility movement that isn't even a full exercise with load, mm -hmm. but it's getting you to do something different because the more movement that we add into the day, the less stiffness we have in our body and the less we're going to feel constrained in different motions because we're moving more which we're, we talk about this rule we've probably brought it up a bunch of different times yeah. if you're someone who tends to work whether at a desk or just in a static position where you're not moving a lot you should try to set a timer this is where we transition something from being conscious to being more subconscious and if you set a timer every 30 minutes and that timer says move or okay get up and move and you take 30 seconds to like jen said if you're sitting stand up open up your hips extend through your back stretch out your chest get right back to work mm -hmm. if you do that every half an hour through a seven to eight hour work day you're getting 15 or 16 more tidbits and bites of movement that are going to start to reprogram that system it starts out as something very conscious 
and as you do it more consistently will migrate to something where your body just tells you okay i need to move your body it's when you're doing exercises in the gym you're similar to what we're saying you know when you're working and you're doing mobility that's opposing the work that you're kind of statically in that's the same with your working out so if you're doing a workout where you really want to focus on your chest okay that's fine but are we doing exercises within the same workout or very close within days that work on the opposite where you're Mm -hmm. working on your back and you're working on your shoulder blades in a different way so how are we working from focusing on my quads to focusing on my hamstrings and am i getting this opposing muscle group so that my body is naturally finding what we talked about in the beginning this balance this alignment without having to think or force it if i'm working a lot on crunches and core am i doing a lot for my back am i doing extension am i balancing out my system so that when i'm standing walking i'm not having to think about it because my body already knows how to coordinate itself and and people can use machines for a lot of different reasons and machines aren't bad you know machines are getting us moving they're putting tension through our muscles they're getting us doing some of these major movements but they're a bit restrictive in the pattern Mm -hmm. one some machines might not be properly sized or be able to adjust to your body size but also they they keep us in one track right and this is where we prefer sometimes to use free weights whether it's dumbbells barbells kettlebells doing single limb or single sided exercises Mm -hmm. what these help us do is is work in an unbalanced situation whether we're doing a a single arm bent over row that's making us support through the core that's making us use a slight bit of that rotation or a single arm overhead press that we can slightly rotate through our upper back while Mm -hmm. we press overhead it's really going to help us work into some of that dynamic ability to support through many different positions and many positions that we probably use a little bit more throughout our day versus a traditional bench press or a traditional two-arm pull or row okay how can i maximize my range of motion a lot of times we cut off our range of motion or we think well i'm restricted so i'm just going to move within the range that i have which is great like at least you're moving (laughs) i'm happy with that right Mm -hmm. exercise in general is great so at least you're moving but how can i maximize my range of motion so that i'm really working into my full joints capacity and i'm improving my range of motion as i'm doing exercise i think you brought up the example of like someone who lifts a ton and they do a lot of row and pull exercises but they always seem to still be Mm -hmm. pulled forward at the shoulder so they're doing that row exercise but their shoulder always seems to be forward which some people might think I'm maximizing my range of motion because by I'm pulling, pulling my back elbow further back. Yeah. I'm pulling my elbow back further. But again, having an understanding of form and some of those compensatory or those compensation patterns that we fall into and finding the range of motion with the shoulder blade. Yeah, not just <laughs> uh, the shoulder. Again, in the row example, pulling back, finding that full range of motion of the shoulder blade retracting, getting a full row in and then coming forward. Mm-hmm rather than feeling like you're pushing into a range that requires you to compensate. Yeah, or if you're doing squats and you feel like, you know, I just can't get past parallel, you're using a little elevation for your heels then so that you can work on that core stability under load but being a little bit more upright. Again, this is gonna help to naturally get into that pressure dynamic of the rib cage over pelvis and how you breathe and load in that position so that you breathe and load in standing and walking without having to think about it. (laughs) And another thing is we talk about the eccentric phase of the Mm -hmm. exercise, which is the phase of the exercise where we're lengthening the muscles. So think about laying on your back and doing a chest fly where both your arms are coming out to the side. The eccentric phase are when those weights are coming down to the ground because that chest muscle is lengthening while we're doing that. Mm -hmm. And anytime we lengthen under load, you know, we make that muscle work a little bit harder. We might even push more adaptation because of the work we're requiring the muscle to do in that eccentric phase. So really focus on controlled eccentric movements can even help with that mobility that we're looking for when we go through good full range of motion. I mean, all these things are going to help to bring you back to this balance within your own system everyone has their own system based on what they do during the day how they lift how they like to work out like what they do so there's no one way to do anything it's just we're giving you principles to kind of move by Mm -hmm. because in the end of the day consistency is key and the more that you do this the better that you're going to feel so what are the exercises that help with posture doing more of using more of these principles 
throughout your lifetime. That's what's going to really help your posture. Yeah. Some people listen to a podcast like this and they're just like, well, that's frustrating. They didn't tell me what yeah. to do. You what know, are the five exercises. What are the five exercises? <laughs> what's the one back circuit that I need to do to like keep my shoulders back? And again, you can hammer away at a back circuit all you want and not notice a long term difference because of some of these things we're bringing up. It, it is a consistent patterning thing that we need to work on, mm -hmm. finding consistency and specifically doing it on the things that you know you avoid or you know yeah. you have restrictions in. Yeah, we have plans for low back, hips. If your hips, you know, you're super restricted, you sit cross-legged, your foot falls asleep, you can't sit cross-legged, you know you have some hip <laughs> restrictions. We have a hip plan. We have a shoulder plan. If you know you press overhead and you have restrictions there. So if there are places within your body and you don't know what to do, you just want something to follow and not have to think about, that's what we do for Gen Health. And it goes along with whatever exercises you're already doing because it only takes eight to 15 minutes a day. And you could break that up within the day as well. You could do one video in, in the morning, do your workout, and then one video later in the day. And as long as you're adding that in consistently, this is how you're going to start to address those restrictions along with all these principles with exercise to really help you feel so much more supported and balanced within your body. So there we go. Some of our biggest tips on exercises or how you should focus on exercise to work on your posture throughout life. What did you think? Do you have any more questions coming out of that podcast? Are there things that you have found are really helpful in your own posture journey? Give us some topics that you want us to do podcasts on in the future. And of course, before you go, hit that notification bell and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our future videos.